Thank you very much for turning up today and welcome to the launch of the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships. This year the event, thanks to the Australian Dragon Boat Federation, Dragon Boats Victoria and the organising committee for the 2012 Australian Championships will be held in Melbourne's picturesque Docklands. Take a look over there, that is exactly where it's going to be happen happening and I can't imagine a better place for it. This year, the event takes place for the first time over a period of five days, from the 31st of March to the 5th of April, and we'll see over 2,000 paddlers compete for the title of Australia's best at both club and state level. Some teams and paddlers make no, no secret of the fact that they will be in Melbourne to win, while other teams are here and participating for the social aspect of dragon boat racing. Right now, teams are busy training hard up and down places like the Yarra, Parramatta and Swan Rivers. It's blood, it's sweat, it's tears and it's blisters thrown in for good measure. There are other teams of course, uh, teams that uh, train on waterways for friendship, for fitness and they often barbecue and drinks at the end of training. Sounds about my sort of team so I might see you down there. And of course there are other teams as well, teams that are putting a positive spin on cancer by forming a team to help fight the disease, raise awareness of, and support someone facing a battle against cancer. Every team, no matter their personal goal, has the right to compete in this year's Australian Championships, and we look forward to seeing them do the best job they possibly can. It's the camaraderie, the mateship, the team bonding, and, and just the, the team spirit that really makes dragon boat racing an instantly likeable and endearing sport. Its philosophy is outlined in the dragon spirit and encompasses many things we're taught when we first participate in any sport. Play the game for the game's sake. Be modest in victory and generous in defeat. And it only took me 27 years to work out how to be generous in defeat. Be true to your fellow paddler. Paddle not for yourself, but for the team. And work hard and be strong. Expect no reward and reward will come. With core values like this, it's easy to understand why dragon boat racing is the epitome of all team sports. AFL, cricket, NRL, netball, etc. are all fantastic team sports, but they can all be won without a unified team effort. A dragon boat team that doesn't operate with teamwork and a commitment to the common good doesn't get very far in the water. The popular sporting saying, there's no I in team, is no more applicable than in dragon boat racing. Australia has embraced such sports as dragon boat racing and martial arts from the Chinese community and it proves the success of multiculturalism within our country. Dragon boat racing is one way different cultures are merging and finding common ground. And this has been displayed to us in recent by the Chinese consulate and its willingness and happiness to be involved in promoting dragon boat racing to Melbourne and beyond. The consulate general of the People's Republic of China was established in Melbourne in 1986 and it has jurisdiction over Victoria and Tasmania. The principles of its establishment was to promote good exchanges and develop friendly cooperation between Victoria, Tasmania and China in the fields of economy, trade, science, technology and culture. It is for the reasons of culture, tradition and history that a representative from the consulate is with us today. And I'd like to invite the Acting Consulate General, Mr Huang, to speak with us now. So, to the Honourable Deputy Lord Mayor Susan Riley, uh, the City of Melbourne Councillor Kevin Loy, and uh, to Mr Cal Watt, President of the Australian Dragon Boat Federation, uh, Mr. Trevor Hoggart, President of Dragon Boats of Victoria, and uh, Mr. Adam Jam, the representative of China South Asian Line. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, especially for the uh, some of players of Dragon, paddlers of the Dragon team, uh, good morning. As we know, uh, Australia is one of the world's strongest country in aquatic sports. It won nine gold medals in swimming, rowing and canoeing at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Whereas when it comes to history of aquatic sports, China was also 
very popular in the ancient time. It was over 2,000 years ago that ancient Chinese began the tradition of dragon boat racing in memory of patriotic po poet Qu Yuan. This tradition has sustained the change of times and is still widely adored by modern Chinese and overseas people. Uh, before I, before coming to Melbourne, I thought I was miss the watching the dragon racing for for years. Uh, it turns out that I was wrong. I'm really a very honored and excited and surprised that learned that large dragon boat championship will be held in Melbourne in next next month. Uh, as many as more than two thousand paddlers. Uh, participants from Australia nationwide. Dragon boat racing is a great sport to keep fit as, as well as foster willpower and team work spirit. And, uh, but more than that, I think it could be uh, explained by the, their interest to Chinese culture because the dragon is a, really a symbol of uh, Chinese culture. And uh, the story of bold and kind fishermen paddling the dragon boats to save the drawing patriotic poet Qu Yuan is a household tale in China. So the, the mutual understanding and friendly, friend, friendliness between peoples are the vital foundation and the endless driving force to the sound advancement of China-Australia relation through providing Australian public an opportunity to watch and experience in person to the dragon boat racing with authentic Chinese features. The dragon boat champion championship is believed to be able to further inspire the interest and affection of Australia on Chinese culture again and th thus deepen the friendship between China and Australia. Uh, finally, I wish to express my heartfelt thank to the Australian Dragon Boat Federation for the thoughtful arrangements in organizing the championship. And uh, I also highly value that for the city of Melbourne for their uh, spread and uh, uh, promote the Chinese culture in the city of Melbourne and also uh, as well as the multi-culture in uh, spread and uh, promotion in Melbourne. And I'm keenly looking forward to the kickoff on the 31st ma of March of the Dragon Boat Racing Championship. So may the Dragon Boat Racing Championship achieve great success in the year of Jagan. Thank you very much. The Melbourne City Council, amongst other things, it keeps the city alive and buzzing with an array of sporting, artistic, indigenous and cultural events. It would seem no matter the day or time, Melbourne is entertaining its residents and visitors in some capacity, somewhere, with something. The Deputy Lord Mayor Susan Riley, aside from being a successful businesswoman in the publishing and media field, also sits on all City of Melbourne Council committees. Deputy Lord Mayor Riley is also a member of the Melbourne Spring Fashion Week Advisory Board, the Melbourne Arts Trust Board and the Moomer Advisory Board, and that's just to name a few, she's involved in a, a few others as well. It's conclusive proof that Deputy Lord Mayor Riley is somebody who is eager, committed to working hard, to getting involved, and to making a positive contribution to Melbourne society. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome her to speak with us today about Melbourne's love affair of water sports and the potential future plans for the Docklands area. Thank you. To our Council General, thank you so much for coming this morning. Um, to Councillor Kevin Louie, um, Kevin and I seem to follow each other around. We're, we're great mates. Um, Karen Wu, the Community Development Manager of uh, Len Lease. And there's so many familiar faces in, around me today. There's um, Trevor, there's David, there's Jenny. And what would we do without Southern China Airlines? Thank you for coming. 
Um, before I begin, I respectfully acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional land of the Kula Nation, and I pay my respects to the elders, both past and present. Now, isn't it a good morning? Just have a look out there. If we can produce this at the end of March, I think everyone's going to be a winner. Uh, it's a spectacular sight. I am the Deputy Lord Mayor, and it is my pleasure to join you today. Now, I have to say, dragon boat racing has sort of been part of the history of the city, and it seems to go in waves. But having said that, it's absolutely so special that we have ahead of us the Australian Dragon Boat Championships. Now, from what I'm gathered, and I have seen them before on the Yarra, the dazzling speed and the, and the beating drums all set against the wonderful backdrop of Melbourne's skyline. And I am delighted to welcome this terrific event to our waterfront. The City of Melbourne has supported Dragon Boat Racing for many years and we believe it brings a great sense of theatre and excitement to the city. And I'm sure you'll agree that the residents and visitors are enjoying the city's waterfront more than ever before. Now while vessels have glided through the Yarra for many years, the development of such areas as Docklands, North Bank and South Bank, is now attracting people in greater numbers to enjoy maritime events of many kinds. Dragon Boat Racing allows us to see the, the finest athletes in action and in the next five days, the next five, close to 3,000 participants from a wide range of backgrounds will take place. And I think what Trevor just said to me before just reminded me how much any sporting event in the city is so good for the city. Um, Trevor was saying that there's about 25,000 beds booked for this race, which just helps the economy of Melbourne so much and flowing into Easter, they might stay and enjoy our beautiful city. So what an apt symbol for Melbourne, a tradition beginning in China more than 2,000 years, flourishes in a modern city as ours. Now Melbourne celebrates diversity, we love sport, we welcome all who join our community. But may I congratulate the organisers of this wonderful event, to the athletes, to the two beautiful looking girls I met before, uh, the gold winners, uh, in Florida, um, well, let's just make sure you do it again. And uh, I thank you for coming along as well. So I wish everyone that's going to paddle the best of success and uh, miss maybe the best team wins, and of course it will be Melbourne. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Lord Mayor Riley. Now, I'm sure you can understand there have been various individuals and groups who have worked tirelessly to ensure the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships is the best it can be. I shudder to think how many hours have gone into organising and the effort that's, uh, that's been made to create a cohesive and meaningful event. Eliza Campbell is a part of the 2012 Australian Championships Organising Committee and I, I can only imagine she's experienced a, her fair share of uh, long working days, nights and weekends recently. And I'm not too sure how she managed to prepare for us today, but as a true professional does, she has. So I welcome her to the stage now to, uh, to speak with us. Honoured guests, members of the media, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and of course paddlers, the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships will be held from the 31st of March to the 5th of April here at Docklands. The event is expected to draw around 3,000 paddlers, I'll, I'll go there, from, from across the nation to compete at both club and state levels. Along with the competitors, where you'll see thousands of sport, sponsors, volunteers, officials, dignitaries, honoured guests and all the spectators that we are sure the event is going to draw. Now, we probably could have done it a little differently. We probably could have taken our event to an established rowing course. But instead, just to the left of me here, we are in the process of building an Olympic standard rowing course right here at Historical Docklands with the fabulous backdrop of Eddie Head Stadium. Docklands is the home of dragon boat racing, so really there was, no, uh, there was no question as to where we were going to hold the event in Melbourne. Now, just a little bit about the racing, just generally, for those of you who are not too sure. Race days will consist of 200 metres, 500 metres, and the fast-paced two-kilometre race, or sweeps race, where we will see the dragon boats racing around the outside of the 500 metre course, a cat and mouse star race where the slower boats will go first, followed by the faster boats. It's always an exciting demonstration of dragon boat racing and also shows a, a, a sweep's key ability to get the boat around the course. And we'll include a marketplace just under the public art piece, the cow up the tree, and we'll house our retailers providing paddling equipment, merchandise and hot coffee for paddlers. 
We are also working with a number of the restaurants around the Docklands Harbour to ensure that we have great lunch and dinner deals for paddlers and also some great deals at the bar, which we know is very important. <laughs> So none of this could be done without the organising committee, and that has been said said, said this morning. Um, and and these, these committee members are all voluntary positions. So the organising committee consists of an event chairman and around 15 key members uh, with, a sub, with an army of, of subcommittee members that take care of things like volunteers, tents for competitors, merchandising and logo designs, finishing tower, water tanks, marshalling, government permits, boat, uh, boat preparation, Facebook, Twitter feeds, websites, safety boats, and not to forget the all-important toilets, because we all know that dragon boat races do keep relatively hydrated. I will just take this opportunity to pass the apologies of the event chair on David Abel. He wasn't able to make it today due to work commitments. Um, I'm David's partner, and he was happy for me to have uh, happy for me to represent the organising committee and speak on his behalf. Because in fact, I'd say he'd rather he's rather used to it. In, in partnership with the City of Melbourne, Parks Victoria and Dragon Boats Victoria, and based on the success of the event, we'd really like to see a home or a hub for water sports in Melbourne built here at the Docklands, allowing increased access and, vis and visibility to the promotion of dragon boat racing and other water sports in Victoria. Um, I'd like to say a really big thank you to the people that have come along today. Uh, the Acting Council General of China, Mr. Kung, thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor Susan Riley, thank you for coming. Um, and of course all the others that have come to join us today, you really have brought a lot of support that will flow through to our opening ceremony and our race day events. A big thank you to Mr. Kel Watt, who's the president of the Australian Dragon Boat Federation and really is all things dragon boating in Australia. Um, and also a big thank you to Mr. Trevor Huggard, whose continued support we absolutely could not do without. Um, we are also fortunate enough today to have the coach of the Australian National Dragon Boat Championships, the Auroras, um, Serge Cusack, so Serge so is just, just back there in the, in the blue t-shirt. And we also have a member, uh, quite a few members of the Aurora's team around and, and you can't miss them with their, with their green and gold on. Um, so what's next? Training, preparation and promotion. We are continuing to work to promote the sponsorship of the event and also advertising, but we are planning to have and attract national media coverage and that's where we need your help. There will always be somebody around that's willing to take an interview, do a supporting piece, to encourage and to get people down to the Docklands for the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships. But I just say, from personal experience, dragon boating is a different kind of sport. It is filled with opportunity and I am someone who can attest to that through the years that I've been dragon boating. There are many people in this room that have seen dragon boating grow in Australia, but in particular have seen the path dragon boating has taken in Victoria. And this event signifies the start of something new for Dragon Boats Victoria. To be a dragon boater, you don't need to have started at the age of five and worked for many, 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 many years. You can go as far as the world stage just by making a decision to change the way you manage your time or prioritise your life. Anything is possible in the sport of dragon boating. And it's this promise and opportunity that we want to bring to the Docklands this year. So working in partnership with the Australian Dragon Boat Federation, Dragon Boats Victoria and the organising committee for the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships, we are honoured and excited to host, this, to host athletes from the states and territories around Australia. And once again, I ask you to go out there, promote our event and help us make it the best Australian championship so far. Thank you. We do just have one more thing to do before I hand the microphone back. Um, it gives me great pleasure to announce the name of our mascot, the Weedy Sea Dragon. We chose the Weedy Sea Dragon because it is the marine emblem for Victoria and you can see him just on the front of the banner here, the little red guy. Though the Weedy Sea Dragon is similar in appearance to the seahorse, it doesn't have grippers on its tail to move around, but rather it uses its tail for steerage, which is much like a dragon boat. So this is why we've chosen it. So I believe there's only just one thing to do here. We ran a competition and we had a number of possibilities sent through, ranging from chop our weed which we decided against, and Wendell the Weedy Sea Dragon. But from 20 finalists, the organising committee got it down to one. The name of the 2012 Australian Jagger Boat Championships mascot is Splash the Weedy Sea Dragon. I'd like to say congratulations to Melissa O'Brien from Victoria. And Melissa is unable to make it today, but she will be passed her prize on the first day of, of race day for the championship. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for that, Eliza. You certainly um, sold the event, and I think we're all going to attend anyway. I hope today has highlighted to you the uh, 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships. They're going to be an event 
not to be missed. And uh, to, to carry on from Eliza there, I'd like to, uh, to take this opportunity to thank our guest speakers, Mr Huang, Deputy Lord Mayor Susan Riley, and of course uh, Ms Campbell as well. This event would not be possible without the continued help and support of our sponsors. We have many, many sponsors, so thank you very much for uh, lending your name and your efforts towards the Australian Dragon Boat Championships. But of course, we could always do with more, so if you know of anyone, let us know. Um, we've been joined here today by representatives from many of the Victorian Dragon Boat teams and the Australian Dragon Boat team, the Auroras, including their coach, as we found out before, won a number of medals recently in Tampa and in China. So to everyone else who's here today, thank you very much. We trust that you'll be uh, attending the event and um, you're most welcome to join us for a chat, coffee, whatever else is on the table up there. And there is a Dragon Boat out there as well if you'd like to get some photos or find out a little bit more about it. So the 2012 Australian Dragon Boat Championships will be held from the 31st of March to the 5th of April in the Docklands, that very area over there. And it does not get any nicer or any better. Melbourne is set to put on a show for us all. And uh, I think all that's left to say is uh, good luck to everyone who is competing. See you there and thank you very much.